everybody, welcome to the Free White North. My name is Van and I am here to tell you what it takes to get involved into IPSC. A lot of people ask me, you know, how do you get into International Practical Shooting Confederation type action shooting sports? Uh, what do you need for gear? What do you need for equipment? Um, and the first thing I'll say is you need to get your restricted firearms license in Canada and you need to uh, purchase a firearm. And once that restricted firearms uh, restricted firearm is in your possession, you can uh, go take it to the range, do some practice, do whatever you want. But you still can't compete in uh, any IPSC uh, sanctioned uh, matches. What you need to do then is. Uh, go and take a block badge course, which actually certifies you for your holster certification. So you're actually able to safely draw from a holster. Um, it's pretty easy. It's about a two and a half day, three day event, depending on uh, where you go. It's usually over a weekend. So like a Friday night in class and then Saturday, Sunday at the actual range. Uh, lots of different IPSC clubs and regions throughout Canada and the world um, have these uh, block badge courses. And you actually have to be able to, to, uh, to pass the first match after your mini match. You can, so you have to compete in your first match in order to get your black badge actual pin and your certificate. So uh, first things first, you have uh, you need a gun. So you need a pistol of some sort. Uh, this one is a CZ or CZ Shadow 2. Um, it's unloaded, empty. There's nothing. There's no magazine. It's clear. Um, this is a uh, slightly modified uh, kind of stock gun, but this is meant to compete in the production category or production division in IPSC and I think for USPSA as well as the equivalent. A couple of minor modifications to it over the years. Well, a little bit of wind to blow my uh, case over because it's empty now. Um, I've Things like uh, a little bit of a lighter springs for a little bit of a lighter trigger uh, pull and then also uh, I've replaced the firing pin and the firing pin spring. Nothing major, it's generally pretty well stock outside of that. Uh, it's a fantastic gun out of the box. <laughs> you are not going to ever, um, if you're looking for a really good production gun, these and the Tang Fos are pretty much the top two that people gravitate to, especially when they're starting out and then they can move on to something else if they want to go into the open division or if they want to go into uh, like carry optics or, or production optics or whatever the case may be. So this first thing you need is, is a pistol uh, because it's a pistol, handgun, action and shooting sport. Um, the nice thing about this one is that it fits my hand really well. There's all sorts of different grips you can get for different uh, thicknesses and, and for different size hands, but I really enjoy this one. It's it's a nice heavy gun, so the recoil control is really good. It doesn't bounce around on me too much, and it's it's good. I started out with a polymer um, striker f action striker fired pistol, and honestly, it was fine, no issues. But that's what I took my black badge with. And then when I started to get into competition, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna have a dedicated gun just for uh, for IPSC. So that's when I switched to the Shadow Two. Um, the other thing that you need besides just the pistol itself, you actually need magazines. So I see here I have six. Uh, most people run with about five to six, seven uh, mags. Uh, five is kind of usually the recommended minimum that you need to get started in IPSC. Um, each magazine probably costs about 40 to 50 bucks, depending on how you can get it, sometimes upwards of 60 if there's a shortage. But I have these kind of aftermarket uh, base pads from Double Tap Sports. DAA sells them as well, Double Off Academy. And then I also have a gun belt. So. Um, the gun belt is one of the major pieces of gear that you need, and it doesn't cost very much. I think it's like 60 bucks. So it has, comes with an inner belt that goes inside your uh, waistband loops. And then this has Velcro on the other side, and it all kind of cinches in and it uh, helps keep the belt on you. Because I mean, once you load this up with six magazines full of ammunition, a holster and the gun, it can sag pretty good. So it does come with a keeper as well. And there are some regulations around your belt as well. And that's all explained in the black badge course, what, you know, how many keepers you have to have if it's not a, if it doesn't go through so many loops. And then there's all sorts of different little minutia of detail that you get into. But, Obviously the, the gun belt is very important and then you have to have some sort of mechanism so the, to keep your um, magazines on your belt. So these are mag holders, mag pouches, whatever you want to call them. And then there's actually a, kind of an optional, a lot of guys run this as well as a magnetic, either they mount it onto the side of here or they have it separate on the back so that you have just an extra spare. A lot of guys will run a, uh, an extra round because mag magazine capacity is 10 in production as well as in Canada anyway. So just overall for pistols. So they'll run one in the chamber off of kind of like a, I forget what the actual term is, but uh, that's what they run in the chamber. And then they load their mag when they're ready to go. Um, apart from that, the other thing that you'll really need is a decent holster. Um, they have to be 
kind of level one retention from my recollection, but they cannot be those Serpa style holsters, which are typically considered level two, because there's there have been too many accidents with the Serpas. So um, for safety's sake, they say it has to be a level, um, it just has to be a, a holster that the gun can easily come in out of without you having to action anything with, a, with your trigger finger or another finger, because there's an opportunity that that trigger finger, because well, you're pressing down to release the holster, it could go and, and you could, your finger could end up in the trigger guard, which is a pretty much an automatic disqualification if you get an accidental discharge. Um, and overall, just like a, overall a safety risk for everybody involved. Uh, so that's basically the basic gear. That's all you really need to get started. A firearm and a, a bunch of magazines and you're good to go. Obviously you need ammunition to run it, but that's another conversation. Uh, what kind of, apart from that, one of the nice to haves is really you need ear protection and you need eye protection. I really like these, um, these impact sports. They're pretty good, they're electronic. Uh, you can turn them on and off. You can hear range commands a lot easier with them. That's a really good option for people. And sometimes they go on sale at, I think on Amazon and Cabela's and Lowe's and some of the big box stores, they go on sale for like 70, 50, 60 bucks, something like that. I think I got these for 40 when they were on sale on Amazon a while back. And you have to be really careful with these because there have been a bunch of imposters and replicas from China. And um, that can really hurt your hearing if, um, if you're not using the authentic products with the right decibel limitation and cutoffs and all that kind of stuff. What I did end up actually, another option for ear protection is these guys, they're just custom molded, uh, custom molded silicone earplugs with a, um, with a little bit of a attenuation and they have these, uh, these little inserts, they're little cones that allow me to actually hear range commands and I can actually have these in my ears and be talking to people having a nice normal conversation. They just automatically cut off anything over a certain decibel pressure, they shut off and they cut that noise off and that's how they act. So that, I really like these quite a bit. I actually got them because I do a lot of competitive shooting and for work around the house if I'm using like heavy tools or anything along those lines. Uh, for ear, eye protection, that's mandatory. Again, another mandatory piece, piece of safety equipment for on the range and for shooting sports in general. Um, and I like these uh, Oakley uh, M-Frame uh, Ballistic SI 2.0s. Um, I like it because the, the lens is interchangeable. I mean, they look super tactical. It's not really my jam. I don't really wear sunglasses like this generally speaking, but for on the range, I really don't care what I look like as long as they work and they keep my eyes safe, that's all that matters. So I have a clear pair for kind of overcast days and low light days, and then I have a uh, like a black uh, set of lenses for when it's really, really sunny like today, and I'm not wearing any sunglasses, so you see me squinting a lot. Um, Another nice piece of like really nice to have gear is this uh, is this brush. So the really cool thing for these brushes is that, you know, we compete in a lot of ranges that have a lot of silt and sand and all sorts of things. So whenever you do a mag drop, the mag just drops right down into the, the sand and the ground and the dirt. And then over time, especially if it's empty, like a lot of dirt and stuff can get in through here. So these, these are really nice mag brushes and they have a little thing for popping this guy off. And you have to be real careful with the spring on the bottom plate, you take this off, you basically just give it a couple of nice little that guy and then you just clean off your your magazine and you're good to go and now you know okay it's pretty clear I'm good to go I can reassemble this and move on and you do that same thing in between stages or halfway through like a lunch break or whatever it is just to make sure you don't get any jam ups because you know half a second could be you know first place to last place sometimes so you never know. Um, so that's basically that gear. And then the last piece of gear that I would really recommend, it's optional, it's not mandatory by any stretch, you don't need it for competing, but it's a speed timer or a shot timer. So I have the speed timer 3000 here. Uh, I think I found it on sale not too long ago for like 120 bucks or something like that. I think it was also from Double Tap Sports. And um, they, they're really, really useful because if you're on the range by yourself, you can kind of clip it to your pants and go, okay, I want to do some practice. I want to practice my draws. So you can set part time or you can actually, if you're doing live fire practice, you can set it up to, to time every single one of your shots. You can see how long it took you from draw to the first shot. Um, and you can see, oh, this took me like two and a half seconds. So that's really slow. I should try to get that under about a second and a half or whatever your goal you're trying to achieve, however fast you're getting. So you actually 
can track your progression and, and see if you're getting any better or faster. So that, that's really good. And then the part-time is really handy in the sense, like if you're doing dry fire practice at home, um, you can set your part-timer. So what it does is it gives you the go signal. And as soon as you get the go signal, you draw, you do your thing, and you try to beat the, the second beep. So the, the part-timer is effectively just from the beep go to beep stop, and you're trying to beat that second beep. So that's a really useful tool for practicing and for trying to get better. I use it all the time. And I have a couple of different timer options. I, there's actually even some uh, shot timer applications you can buy for your iPhone on your Android that work kind of in the same way. The, I would just say that in real world practice, I would prefer one of these, uh, but the other ones are really good for home. If you're doing dry fire, they're fine as well. Uh, so for part time and that kind of stuff. The sensors on these ones, the microphones are a lot better and they're a lot better at um, filtering out echoes and second shots and that kind of stuff. So you don't get any confusing data that you're like, what the hell is this? So that's it. That's basically all the gear you need to shoot Ipsic. Uh, most important thing is be safe. Take your black badge course if you're in Canada or anywhere else in the world to compete Ipsic and uh, gear up. Thanks for watching.